thank God for Casual Tuesdays. You got anything on you'd like to take off? Go for it. Hey, keep something on. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Tuesday. It is January 9th. Now, we're not going to do anything new on this show. We're going to look at some hot OTC and penny stocks. I am referring to stocks under 5 bucks that you can find on the major exchanges and the OTC. And we are primarily looking for stocks that have the potential to make us money. So where do you look for those sort of stocks? Well, honestly, I find it is easier to find them on the charts than it is in the news. I can see heat in a chart real quick, volume coming in, breakout setup. When I see a chart that has heat, then I'll invest the time going through the filings and the press releases, looking for a catalyst, looking for a hot piece of news. When I get hot news to go with a hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you on a regular basis. And I've got a few of those to share with you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is NSAV, ticker NSAV, Net Savings Link. Now, her chart looks good for continuation. She broke out about a month ago, really climbed high over the 200, worked her way back down to it, dipped under it just a little and has come back up and everything looks like she wants to start climbing again. And it's good timing because we just had news come out today. NSAB finished the day at 0015, an excellent buy price. You get up to 003, you've doubled your money just that quick and easy. She was up just over 4% today. She is on the pink tier of the OTC. She's current and she's got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, especially with the pink. This is validated information. You don't get any validated information with banks, not even their financials. That's why they're called disclosures. So this is really the best you're going to get looking at a pink. So she's looking good. So what is NSAV about? Well, they tell us here that they are a fully integrated technology company, which provides turnkey technological solutions to the cryptocurrency, blockchain, and digital asset industries. Over time, the company plans to provide a wide range of services, such as software solutions, e-commerce, financial services, advisory services, and information technology. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, that's a nice jump, going from just over 26 million to just under 40 million today. Share structure for NSAV is atrocious. <laughs> wow. Outstanding share count is way up there at 6.6 .6 billion, virtually everything they got in the authorized share count. Insiders own less than a billion of those, 715 million. We get all the rest in the float. That's almost 6 billion, 5.9 billion. Market cap with all those shares is still just $9.5 million. Looking at the financials for the company. Oh, we got nothing on the annuals. What about the quarterlies? No, I am surprised. I thought they had revenues coming in. I know you thought I went through all of this. No, I look at important stuff, but you got to remember as a day trader, we don't need all the information. I really don't need to know the financials. I really don't need to know anything about the management. Not if I'm day trading, I'm going to get in and out so quick. None of that stuff really matters. I'm normally just looking for a catalyst. And that's really what this show is all about. We're just breezing over the rest of this information in case you're thinking about a long hold. Take a look at the balance sheet for the company. They got nothing in the bank. That's good to know. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. Total assets, 84 million. A lot more than I was expecting. Liabilities are less than assets, 68 million. We're ending up with stockholder equity of just over 16 million. So that's not bad. Looking at our disclosures for NSAV. We've got nothing here since July. So let's just jump on over into that news. So we've got lots of news here, but really, as I said, we're primarily interested in the catalyst. News that just came out to match our hot chart. And that's what we got right here. This just came out today. The company has begun the process of making applications to multiple jurisdictions to license the exchange as a money exchange. Hmm. In addition, NSAB will apply as a money services business, also known as a money transmitter. While there is still limited regulatory framework for what actual licenses are required, 
we have followed the advice of counsel to apply in the pertinent major jurisdictions. Then they give us a list here of the coins that they have. But down here they tell us that NSAF plans more exciting listings in the near future and many other upgrades to the platform to drive user growth. This aggressive plan includes upgrades in tech capabilities, licensing, and partnerships to come. So we've got things to look forward to, but what we really need to see are revenues. However, the news just came out and the chart is set up and that's all you need. Even a soft catalyst can get a hot chart running. Let's go take a look at what I think is a hot chart. Since it's my only charting platform, I guess we're going to chart these stocks on Think or Swim. So we're looking at NSAV, Net Savings Link. This is a six-month, four-hour view. And those are 52-week highs and lows on the screen. She was doing nothing underneath the 200 here from April until July. And then she blasted off going parabolic, starting pretty much at where we're at right now. 0015 went all the way up to 0039. Well over 100% run. Came back down to this 20, laid on that perfectly for a few days, and then launched again, setting this high bubble of 0054. Now you're looking at over 350% run, and she gave it all away. She fell all the way back down to where she started. She struggled there for a little while, fell under that support, turning it into a resistance where she started banging her head. She couldn't hold it, and she slipped down even further down here to 001. Now she is scraping across the floor right now. You can see how flat my 200 haul is. 200 haul is a lot like your 200 day SMA. It is 200 days of prices averaged together, but he puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with an entirely different long-term line and penny stocks respect it. Well, she was hovering over this 200 day haul underneath the 50. Once she got over the 50, she decided she was done just dragging her butt across the floor. She's going to change her trend and start climbing. She pushed up, and here on the 28th, uh, my bad, the 8th of December, she took off, and I don't know why. She jumped here from 0013 up to 0027. Again, over 100% run. She fell back to her nine-day fully respected that until it all just fell away and she's come back down here to the 200 dipping underneath it and now coming back up on top of the 200 on top of the nine day SMA and you can see our volume is growing right now looking at our oscillators they look like growth is coming our PPO percentage price oscillator has just gone flat and is starting to turn up our MACD has an imminent crossover going on right now and RSI is pretty cool. That's down there at 45. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, that's a serious rip. She jumped from just over the 200 up to that high. Coming down, looks like she was waiting for all of these SMAs to catch up. She did respect the 50 and then lost it here. Coming down underneath the 200 deep and now pushing back up. She has crossed her 20, the 200 haul, and the 50 and she's sitting on top of them all right now and every single one of these smas except for the 200 hall is either flat or starting to turn up it all looks like it is turning around right now our oscillators say that right there you can see just a hint but our blue line has now crossed up over on top of the pink which is what we needed to do our macd has gotten on top of the signal line and our RSI has gotten warmer, though she's pulled back a little bit right now. She is currently at about 51. Five-day, five-minute chart. It's a downhill trend. We were here at a resistance of 0019, exactly. She came down underneath the 200, hit that a couple times, falling down to this low of 0012 and bouncing off of that. And she has put herself, you can see, she jumped up on top of the 200, threw a stake down. I don't think that's a fall. I think that is putting a pillar into the ground to steady everything up above because you're going to start building. So this looks very good to me. It went through a strong SMA and the 20 and then deep into the dirt. Came back up, put another one down, down through the 200 and the 50, and she's put herself back up there. Honestly, I know to most people this doesn't look good, but that looks like structure support to me. Like she is getting ready to climb. And normally I only see one, but to see two, there may be a bigger bang here than we expect. The oscillators, they're not agreeing with anything I just said. Our PPO is falling. 
our MACD is falling, and our RSI is under 55 at 49. But the volume has been growing. Even here, you can still see it with some strong pops through the day, and she is in the right position. I think she is worthy of at least putting on your watch list, folks, an SAV. Our next stock, ticker PBIO, Pressure Biosciences, it's got the same sort of chart as we were just looking at. It already broke out over the 200 when it was still falling. Went up real high, came back down, went under the 200, is sitting there right now, and the 200 is completely flat, and it has not been flat for a very long time. So it looks like it's ready to break out. And we did have some good information come out just a couple days ago. So PBIO, Pressure Biosciences, Finished the day at 33 and a quarter cents, and she was just under 11% gains today. She is on the better tier of the OTC, the middle tier, the QB. We call this the better tier because you have to audit your financials to be here. You got to have a minimum price of one penny. It is the better tier. It's more transparent. It's more trustworthy. They've got all those green ticks over here we're looking for, looking great. And they've got independent directors listed. Now, the only reason I have discovered here on the otcmarkets.com website, the reason you list independent directors is when you plan on uplisting. Not just thinking about it, when you've literally got things in the works and you're moving forward. So it looks like they have plans, though I haven't read anything about it. So what is Pressure Biosciences about? Well, this is interesting. The company has some technology that they use for a lot of different things. Pressure Biosciences develops, markets, and sells proprietary laboratory instrumentation and associated consumables to the estimated $6 billion life science sample preparation market. Their technology is pressure cycling technology called PCT, and we're going to get more information about that as we go along. To date, they have already installed 300 systems in approximately 175 sites around the world. Their primary application developments and sales efforts are in the biomarker discovery and forensic areas. Interesting. Customers also use our products in other areas, such as drug discovery and design, biotherapeutics characterization, soil and plant biology, vaccine development, histology, and counter bioterror applications. Very interesting. Now, I'll be honest, I first came into knowledge of this company years ago when I first started trading because they came on the cannabis sector. They have a technology for extraction, which we're going to look at. It's called Ultra Shear. And there's many different ways that you can extract CBD and THC, but they found a way to do it to make it nano emulsified. See, the problem was is that we could extract CBDs in lots of different ways using nitrogen, butane, or they're using water and pressure. Well, the big deal was is when you get out the CBDs, it's an oil. So you couldn't mix it with any beverage. It would just float to the top. You couldn't make chocolate with it. It just wouldn't bind together properly. So they had to find a way to make CBDs water soluble. And they came up with that technology. And it is being used on a lot of different things. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, God, she dropped more than 50%, going from 56,000 shares down to 20,000 shares today. Share structure for PBIO, well, that's better than the last one. Outstanding share count isn't bad. We're here at 23.5 million. They do give us a float here. I normally don't look at this number because this date is really old, but that's not old at all. They tell us the float is 8.1 million. See, I would have said it won't be over 23 and could be considerably less. That's considerably less. If that is the float, we have a legitimate low float. Hot dog. Market cap for the company, $7 million. Financials for PBIO, are they making any money? Yes, they are. Um, they've been bouncing around between 1 million and 2 million. We're pulling in profits except at the end of 2022. However, these negative profits here are reflected better on the quarterly statements. You can see that they never had 
any deficits except this very last quarter. I don't know what they sold or what they were tying up at the end of the year, but it does look like a one-time thing. But their revenues have been falling over the last three quarters. They've gone from $740,000 down to $413,000, though they are still making profits. Looking at the balance sheet for the company, not much money in the bank here, about $5,000. Total assets, $1.6 million. Oh, wow. Lots of liabilities, folks. $30 million in liabilities. That gives the stockholders deficit that they're holding, a very big, heavy bag of $28.5 million. Taking a look at the disclosures, we've got a bunch of Form 4s here. Now, Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company stock, which is a big deal. But it's only a big deal to me and you if they buy them or sell them. And that's what we're particularly looking for. So when you jump into one of these, what you want to see Right here in the center is all the information. You're going to see how many they got and at what price. But right here tells you if they bought them or sold them or something else. It is a P for purchase, S for sale. If it's anything else, it's not a buy or a sale. So what is this one? Well, you see that one right there? If you just follow that footnote down here, it tells you that this is interest on convertible preferred stock paid in shares in lieu of cash. So they didn't take the money, they took the shares. And that's what all of them are about. Every single one of the management just took shares instead of cash. All right, let's take a look at that news now. So most of their news is about their technology. And most of it is about peer reviews or editorials, coverages about their technology. So I've got three pieces here. We're only going to dive into one though. The oldest one comes out on the 8th of November. Peer-reviewed scientific study independently confirms Pressure Biosciences' ultra-sheer nano-emulsion platform vastly outperforms current technologies, delivering CBD with unprecedented speed, efficiency, reliability, and bioavailability. What they do, they're doing better than everybody else. And there's a lot of people out there working with CBDs extracting it. And it can be expensive. Another piece of news came out at the very beginning of December. Pressure Biosciences and Veterans Services Team launch Ultra Sheer Best in Class Nano CBD Topical Spray. So this is for veterans, a topical spray. I'm not quite sure what you use it for, but I'm just trying to show you that they do have products. They are working in a lot of different arenas. And when you do some more due diligence, you will see this is being used in agriculture. It's being used in the medical sector to uh, find different ways to make drugs. That last piece of news gives us some information. Pressure Biosciences barrel fold platform expected to revolutionize biopharmaceutical production with help from new computational technologies. They tell us here that the company announced they are actively pursuing and evaluating multiple artificial intelligence and machine learning prospective partnerships, not just a technology, a partnership with another company. The company expects such collaborations to accelerate the identification and prioritization of exciting commercial product opportunities within key markets for PBIO's patented barrel fold technology. Barrel fold is a contraction of like uh, uh, barometric pressure. That's what they're dealing with, pressure. They are using pressure to do a lot of their work and water is how they do that. And their other technology is called ultra shear technology. So those are the two together. Bear of Fold, which has 14 patents, employs high pressure for the disaggregation and controlled refolding of proteins to their desired native structures to significantly improve the quality and production cost of protein therapeutics. UltraShear has eight patents, uses intense shear force from ultra-high pressure valve discharges to turn oil-based supplement therapeutics and other water-insoluble active ingredients into stable, effectively water-soluble, highly bioavailable nano-emissions. A lot of words there, but as I said, it is about extraction and it is about making the oils water-soluble so that we can make drinks out of these oils. It's a great idea.
So this news isn't fresh. It didn't just come out today. It is a little bit old. But as I said about a small catalyst making a hot chart move, even a stale catalyst, and I'm not thinking this is stale. They're just letting you know they've got a new technology now. And this is going to help them make money with, as they put it, new commercial product opportunities. Exciting commercial product opportunities. I really do like that flat 200-day SMA right there. This is ticker PBIO, Pressure Biosciences, and we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. It was six months ago in April when we were deep under the 200. We hit our high of $1.05, and she was falling ever since then, hitting this low in October of 17.5 cents. Floating over our 200 haul, underneath our 50, once she broke out over that 50, she launched from about uh, 20 cents up to 80 cents. You're looking at a 400% run. Now look at how steep our 200 here is. She broke out really early, came crashing back down and did not come back underneath the 200. She bounced again and then bounced again. That is rare, folks. Normally, your stocks will take a break and then come crashing back down. This tells me she doesn't want to come down. She wants to climb. Begrudgingly, she fell underneath her 200 here. You can see tooth and nail. She's trying to hang on. She slipped down. She's coming back up, working on it right now. Our oscillators say just that. You can see our PPO is just turning right now. Same with our MACD, it just had a crossover and is approaching our signal line. I know it's dinky, but our RSI is very cool. That's down there at 48. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So she was pretty much just going sideways here, doing absolutely nothing. She was underneath the 200, got on top of the 200 and then dropped suddenly down to 24 cents, came back up totally respecting the 200 day haul here and then bounced up to the next level. She's put herself up onto the 50 now. That is great to see. Our oscillators say that's exactly what she's doing. She's climbing. We have our PPO climbing right now, crossing our pink line. MACD has crossed the signal line, though our RSI is still a little cool. We've also got a pattern in our oscillators. If you watch my videos, you know what I'm talking about here. This is my PPO, percentage price oscillator. You see my blue line going up. This is my ADX. I don't talk about it too much. This shows me trend continuation. Whenever you have a straight line, whatever the trend was at one side of that line, it is continuing until that line changes. Well, as long as this line is going down and this line is going up, I know my price is climbing. When those two are separating, getting further and further apart, you have got your price climbing. And it works exactly the opposite. If the two are coming together, your price is falling. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. Go, oh, she's all over the place, but is she? Look, I draw a line right there where she started over the last five days is where she's at right now. She just took the hard way to get back there. Lots of volatility in here. She dragged her SMAs down. She's pulling them back up right now. Our oscillators, well, they actually show some growth going on right now. You can see everything was flat for about two, three days here. Everything was flat and now we're getting some activity and it is pushing up. Looks like growth is on the horizon, folks. So we've got a soft, semi-stale catalyst. We've got a decent chart and we've got a company that is making revenues. Problem here, big deficit. We don't have any stockholder equity. However, we're looking at a day trade, right? So we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for heat in the charts and something to push it. I think we got that. I have saved the best for last. This is Ilus, ticker I-L-U-S, Illustrato Pictures International. You know, they really need to do something about that name. Now her chart, it is nothing to get excited about. We shouldn't even be talking about it because it's sad. It's been in a downtrend for a long time and it doesn't show any inspiration or hope. I don't like it. So why are we looking at Eyeless? Because there was some big revelationary news that came out today. Actually, it wasn't news. It is in filings. But the funny thing is, is I discovered this information earlier today on a different ticker. We're over here at Eyeless. I was over at SAML and in their filing, they were talking about a deal that Eyeless made. 
Well, now at the end of the day, all the filings have caught up and it's all out there. However, there is no news press yet. Now, we did have a news press come out in December and the company told us about what they were planning on doing here at the beginning of the year. Well, it's happening and I'm here to tell you what's going on. Eyeless finished today at 0054 with almost 7% drop. She is on the pink tier and current and she's got those two pieces of validated information. So she's looking good. So what is Eyeless all about? Well, they give us a description here, which is accurate, but it's not very clear. What they primarily focus in on is fire prevention and firefighting. I mean, every aspect of it, whether it be metaverse training to fight fires, outfitting high rises with sprinkler systems, selling vehicles to fire departments. They do a lot. They tell us here that they operate out of New York, London, and Dubai, and they are focused on the technology engineering and manufacturing space globally. Historically, the company has evolved out of the industrial sector, mainly from emergency service products, emergency response vehicles, vehicle conversions, electric vehicles, wearable tech, and smart tech. Eilis looks to acquire companies who have strong management and potential to grow rapidly and will benefit from cross-pollination of territories, products, and skills from other groups and companies. The company's got a lot of subsidiaries. They just keep making acquisitions, and then their acquisitions make acquisitions. The company is definitely growing, and the chart is not showing her true value. So what was the relative volume around Eilis today? Well, there is a jump. We've got almost 100%, almost doubled her volume, going from 7.5 million to just over 15 million. Looking at the share structure for ILIS, ah, a lot of shares out there. Outstanding, 1.7 billion. Insiders got about 174 million of them. We get all the rest, 1.5 billion. Market cap for ILIS, we are just under $10 million. Financials for the company, well, as you can see, it's the last two years that they've been making revenues and they jumped hard, coming from nothing to $11.2 million and at the end of 2022 going six times their revenue to just under $80 million. And they got to keep $28 million of that for profit. Looking at her quarterlies, well, she's kind of all over the place here, isn't she? $20 million, $35, $19, $23, $24. The best thing we can say is they're constantly bringing in revenues and profits. Balance sheet for the company. Cash and cash equivalents, what they got in the bank, 1.5 million. Ooh, lots of assets. $267 million worth of assets, 235 million in liabilities, leaving us stockholder equity, $32 million for all of us shareholders to divvy up amongst those shares. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, this is where it got interesting. And I don't see it over here. Where's the 8K? There isn't one. All right, I do want to go into these filings, but I think it's more important to start with the news because the filings back up what the news said back in December. So jumping into the piece of news that came out on December 29th, they've got a lot of information in here and it's all about ready to happen now since we've come into the new year. We've basically got three things, but each one of them has got something else going on with it. So I'm going to try to keep this as organized as I can. The company has signed contracts to acquire the controlling interest of an OTC listed SEC reporting company. The acquired OTC company will be majority owned and controlled by ILAS. Details of the acquisition will be announced at the start of the new year. I think that's today, though a news press hasn't come out about it, only filings. The acquired entity hereafter is going to be referred to as Emergency Response Technologies, ERT, which will be developed as a special purpose vehicle for the finance accelerated growth of emergency response assets, which are currently owned by ILAS. These assets will be merged into ERT for a stock consideration, with ILAS retaining control of ERT and reaping the potential benefits of the accelerated expansion. So they are 
making an acquisition of a company already on the market and they're going to use it to spin out ERT, Emergency Response Technologies, to that ticker. After they do that, they are then going to merge in the assets that ILIS is holding into that company so that company's got value and they're going to give us some dividends. Following ERT's acquisition of emergency response assets from ILIS, it intends to pay a special equity dividend to ILIS shareholders. ERT plans to follow the required corporation action process in order to dividend out a substantial amount of ERT shares to ILIS shareholders. The acquired entity has its own funding line in place for purpose of expansion and as such has access to capital which will be non-dilutive to ILIS shareholders. Therefore, we got something else going on here. ERT intends to complete a previously mentioned significant acquisition which is already in negotiation following which it will prepare itself for an uplist to a major stock exchange. Are you following me here? The company is purchasing an OTC company, which I'm going to share with you here in just a minute, and they are going to spin out ERT into that OTC company. Once they get there, they are then going to put their assets into that company. That new company has an acquisition they're already planning on making, so they're going to acquire a company. Then they're going to spin out this new merged company out onto the NASDAQ. But folks, that ain't all. But before we go any further, what company is it we're talking about? Well, here I am over at, where's the name? There it is. Sam Sarah Luggage. This is ticker S-M-S-A-M-L, I believe it is. Well, they tell us right here on January 3rd, 2024, Estrado Pictures acquired a convertible note from YPAN. On January 5th, two days later, Illustrato converted that note into 150 million shares. As a result of this conversion, Illustrato acquired control 91.5% of the company January 5th. So now the company has another company to spin out to. They are going to put ERT into that company, put their assets into that company, let that company make an acquisition, and then spin it all out onto the NASDAQ. So we have a dividend for equity. That is not a dividend because it's been spun out. That is an equity dividend because there's going to be value in this new company. Once it spins out, there should be a dividend just for those shares in that new company. That's the way I'm reading it. Now, continuing on, we have more information here. Having been approached, the ILIS management team is currently in discussions regarding a merger with a NASDAQ-listed company. So, ILIS themselves have been approached by a NASDAQ company that wants them to come up. Therefore, a non-binding term sheet has been signed with the NASDAQ company for purpose of further exploring the merger opportunity for ILIS or its subsidiaries. Currently, both companies are doing their due diligence. We haven't heard any more information about it. In the meantime, on December 7th of last year, ILIS's subsidiary Quality Industrial Corps filed their amended S-1 registration statement because they are spinning that out onto the New York Stock Exchange. The subsidiary is working towards the S-1 effectiveness and aims to uplist early in the new year. As of this date, QIND has not heard back from the SEC. However, in the meantime, Quind is doing business and they confirmed that their operating company has received a purchase order of $73 million from a U.S. headquartered NASDAQ listed global company. The order will be delivered through the course of 2024 and 2025. Now, there's more news here, folks, but I don't want to go through all of it, but you can see what we got going on. They made an acquisition of SAML. That is now their company. They are going to spin out emergency response technologies into this new OTC company. Once it's there, they are then going to take the assets from ILIS and put them into that company. So now it's got value right from the get-go. After that, Emergency Response Technologies is going to make an acquisition of their own. 
Once the acquisition is completed, they're going to spin out onto the major exchange. Then you've got ILIFs themselves getting ready to do a merge of some sort and uplist to the NASDAQ. And we've got their other subsidiary, Quind, which is in the process of uplisting right now, but doing business and bringing in big money. There's a lot going on here, folks. This chart should change. God, is there anything we need? Maybe a little heat in the chart? Is that asking too much? We are looking at Illustrato Pictures International, ticker ILUS, and we are looking at a four-hour, six-month view. We've got our high bubble back here in May of 4.8 cents when she was deep underneath the 200 and she was in the midst of a fall. Now, she did stop falling when she hit about the two cent mark here. She was here for over two months. But somewhere at the end of October, something happened, and I'm not aware of what it was. But she dropped from two cents down to a half a penny. She then bounced back up to a penny, and she sat there for about a month and a half, but couldn't hold that either. She slipped underneath that, and she has continued her descent. Now, what I can see here is that our price is meandering around the 200-day haul, up above it and below it. That's the only one she's hanging on to. And there really is no hope on the screen. All of our SMAs are pointing down. Our SMA is at a strong incline. The only thing I do see is that our volume is increasing right now. And without the liquidity, we're really not going to see anything happen. Our oscillators, they too are sad. We've got that bad setup here on our oscillators where my PPO was coming down and my ADX is coming up. That tells me the price has fallen. Not to mention we got a negative crossover on our MACD and she's pushing down. And oh my God, look at our RSI down there in the blue at 21. I don't think we've ever looked at a stock that cold before. <laughs> Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. It's a downhill trend. From about a penny underneath the 200 down to a, just over a half a penny without any hope in sight of trend change. Everything is pushing down, including our oscillators. They are all looking sad and still a lot of pressure pushing down on them. Five day, five minute. Well, the only thing I see here, look folks, she was falling. She has now been going sideways today. She has changed the direction of her 50 she has changed the direction of the 200 haul. It went from purple to blue. Two of these now are turning up. That should give us some pull. But as you can see, she just at the end of the day broke through all of our strong SMAs and she hit that low here of 0054. Oscillators are not showing any hope right now. But there should be. There should be all kinds of hope. I don't know why this stock isn't moving. But here it is. The news just came out today that they have acquired SAML. They're now going to spin out uh, the ETR, ERT, ERT onto this new company. Then they're going to give it assets. Then the company's going to make an acquisition. And then it's going to spin out. Next, you've got ILIS themselves looking at a possible merger to the NASDAQ. Next, we got Quinn, Q-I-N-D, which is in the midst of uplisting and just got a contract for $73 million worth of business. There's lots going on. Any one of those can get this thing moving. But for you to catch it, you should probably put it on your watch list. I-L-U-S may surprise you. She looks bad now. In a day or two, she could look really good. I'm only guessing. Now, there's a lot more information out there, folks, on all three of these companies, so please do your own due diligence. I don't mind sharing mine, but I'm not perfect. I can miss stuff, and it is your money. I don't want to be responsible for what happens to your money. Even if you do make a lot of money from something I tell you, you made the decision to get into it, when to get in and when to get out. You're the trader. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.